All right, so going back over again, let's try and figure out where we went wrong. And there's only two things that could have happened. It's like one, either I, the reason why the camera could be moving back to world location, which is the zero zero on that map, is because either we missed our inputs to our world location from our secondary character, which we have not, or it's because our character is not knowing what to be called and that can only be coming from another place since we know it's here let's backtrack in and it's probably coming from our game state so let's jump into our blueprint for our game state so up at the top we'll jump to our secondary leftmost tab and I can already see what I did wrong here was when we spawn this actor we're sending it to be the information for our primary this needs to be switched so let's drag this in for oh real quick let's just control drag this node up let's drag the secondary above to inherit those values and let's plug this into this to the primary now okay so we should be fine here so it should call in it should be able to switch once so when we go to excuse me when we go to switch now it should be able to uh, know what exactly it's reading so we have our primary character, let's go full screen and play it. So if I'm running around and I push tab, I should switch to the other character. I switched and my movement says it's complete. So I can also play as the other character. However, if I go to push tab again, I cannot switch. It's because we need to do the same code for this character. But the good thing is, is we're not going to be wasting a lot of time writing a lot of that blueprint. We already written it out. We just need to copy it over. So in our primary character, this swap character code that we've written, or we already wrote, we can just copy that in. We just need to open up our secondary character's blueprint. And we'll just, since he's the same guy, we can put that up here. And I'm assuming that most characters would be a different kind of playable person with their own functions, or even maybe a similar character. That's why I'm saying a child could possibly be, um, could also be inherited as well. So if we go ahead and copy this whole thing and we paste it, pretty much we're mirroring exactly what we did already. And we need to turn off this bool for character swapping. If you're in your secondary character, make sure this is off or else it's going to keep going back to your secondary and you'll be stuck on him. So we have our follow camera, our cameras are good, and character swapping node is in there as well so we should be able to now flip back and forth between our characters so let's full screen that let's play it and if I'm running around and I hit tab I've switched he's gonna be running because I was in movement and if I push tab again I should be able to switch back to the other character which I have cool so it looks like our character swapping systems already working and you can take this as far as you want with it um, you can do any number of things uh, so technically this video, that's pretty much it for this series. I mean, I've started the video in, instead of wasting a couple of minutes, I can go in and I can kind of show you some other places where you can plug in uh, a few more points where you can actually have maybe a couple more characters than just two. Um, but locations and where I found them to be at inside the blueprints would be, uh, let's disable, I'm going to turn off this print string. And compile and save everything. Now, places where you could switch between multiple characters, where you can set up a, um, a cycling system between a array. An array can hold a lot of your characters as well. Um, so setting up your characters initially like this in the game state. So for your third character, you might need to do something like this. And then fourth, fifth, so on. And then once you get to that last character in your array, your array can be read within your swapper within this middle location here. So instead of doing a bool for true false, since we're only working with two characters, we can actually have an array. And I'd say the best note to be doing this is switch on integer. I tend to use integers a lot, so I can assign my characters a particular number. And if that number is red, it'll switch through trying to find out who is who and and all that. So. It's kind of hard to show the internal timer for this, but again, what I was mentioning too about the timer for uh, being 0 0.1, if I did this for, let's say, 0.5, which should be pretty slow, 
and I go to play it, when I go, let's say, way over here, in one second I should be able to move all the way to him, but it's going to be jumpy. Because it was trying to find his location halfway through that movement. So that's why we're using the point one every couple seconds. Now we've made it even lower, let's say. Uh, let's go with let's go point five again, but let's increase that timeline within our uh, camera movement. So let's make our alert movement within three. Click on the node here. Oh, come on, let's do three. And let's do a time of three. A value of one. So it should stretch throughout the entire thing. And you should see it bounce around quite a bit. Probably I think about two times it's going to jump before we actually find out where to go. So it'll be a much slower movement between characters. But if you saw it was kind of clipping as it was moving along there. So those are some of the uh, additional features that you can do to change out you know, certain attributes on this timeline. So, all right. Well, that pretty much concludes this video here. So hopefully that helps you guys out for anybody else trying to do some character swapping. And if you guys have any other questions, just uh, let me know. And hopefully we can get, figure out something more interesting in the future I'll show off. So, all right. Have a good one.